I think Sal hit it on the head, and that is that Santa Cruz Mountains is, is the sweet spot. We have the cooling influence of the ocean and the warming influence of the elevation in the mountains right near, next to the coastal area. I'm Steve Storrs with Storrs Winery, and I've been making wine in the mountains for about, I don't know, 28 years now, I think it's going on. So when Pam and I first came here uh, and made wine here, uh, my, my goal was to learn, was to produce wine, but also my goal was to actually plant a vineyard and grow our own grapes. Pam and I looked in all the areas, all the sub-appellations of the Santa Cruz Mountains, and we settled on the Corlitas area. The Corlitas sub-appellation is probably the most coastal influenced appellation, and in that it has, uh, we have about, right, you know, and sometimes it's kind of unique, right about 400 to 425 foot elevation, the fog will come in and it'll sit right there and then you get by 10 o'clock it'll clear uh, right above the 400 foot elevation. The Appalachian is determined at 400 feet. It works to the, for growing grapes. You have Pleasant Valley and it reaches down along the San Andreas Fault all the way down to the base of Mount Madonna. It's kind of an exciting place that there's a lot of small vineyards and a lot of actually some big vineyards that are going in there. I think we represent about maybe 20,000 cases of wine that is coming from the Santa Cruz Mountains as Pinot Noir at this point in time. The, the thing that I found the most interesting about Coralitas was that it had the ability to ripen fruit and give us a long hang time. With that, you're actually able to get, you know, you're able to get a good maturity, you're able to get a lot of color in the skins, you're able to get to create a lot of character in the, in the Pinot Noir. One of the things that's unique in the Corlita sub-appellation is there's sort of sandy, uh, sandstone, sand, rocky, uh, sort of rocky sandstone areas or sandy areas, and then there are clay knoll outcrops. And what it is is over time, the clay, a lot of the sand around the area has eroded away and left these old, uh, what is it, they'd be old meadow clay beds. And that's, so all, all of a sudden these clay areas become uh, the sort of the mountaintops or the hilltops in that area and the sandy areas become sort of the valleys there. And this actually come, becomes from a little clay outcrop that's in Pleasant Valley. It's, in, it's at Christie Vineyard, and it's a Pomard clone, so it's the clone four, and it's one of the old UCD clones. And it's, uh, it's one of the things I love about this clone and this clone grown in our area is it makes a very rich wine with a really full mid palate all by itself. Um, a lot of the Dijon clones and a lot of what you see in this, in, uh, that's grown in our areas, it's really nice to blend one clone with another, and, and, and it is. It actually makes, you can make very rich, complex wines that way. But this is, one of the things that's here, is what I find is that the Pomard clone sits by itself and it makes a really rich, big wine by itself. When I'm looking at Pinot Noir in the, in the Pleasant Valley or in that area, I'm really looking for the point where we start to see sort of the a sort of a strawberry character. Something you could probably teach anybody, but it's just, this, it's a very, very minute nuance that happens, that, cha that change that happens in the fair character of those grapes. But I would say, I mean, I do do all the chemistry, but I'm really looking for the flavor. I'm, I'm looking to taste that flavor and to taste that change that, that ch happens with the flavor. And that's, I do that with all the grapes that we harvest.